first of all, what you need to do is structure your day because you have a limited amount of time and you have to do a huge amount of content within a few days. So for the first five days, each day you will need to do minimum of two hours camp, two hours maths, right? And you can do it in any order. So first day you can start with camp, the second day you start with maths. It doesn't really matter though. When you do camp, and I'll show you later on on how to exactly revise for camp and maths using the websites and the right links and so what. What you want to do is you want to go through modules 2, 4 and 6 first. So there's module 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and I'm talking about OCR camp. I would do two, four, six first. The reason why is because the first exam you do in math, in chemistry, even though there's three papers, the first one you do is paper one, which consists of two, four, six. You want to do all the content for the first paper done and sorted. So then you're able to do the practice for the first paper because there's no point in going through the test without knowing the content. So after doing two, four, six, you then go into three and five and therefore you finish all of camp. The, this is the structure, right? And I'll draw it on the screen and show you everything. So the first five days, you just aim for the paper one content. So the way we do this is like flashcards, but it will be on the computer. So instead of doing one piece of paper, which will take a lot of time, you can do it either on Word, which will look like this, or you can do it on Notion, which I use, which is much faster, where you can use short quotes and is more efficient, which will look like this. And by the way, Notion is free. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, but it's really, really good for students and for productivity. So module two is around 86 questions, right? And it'll look like a bit like this. So with module two, it'll take you two days minimum. And then with module four, it'll take you two days minimum. And then with module six, it'll take you two days minimum. Okay. But in, if you're very efficient, the whole thing will not take six days. It'll take five days. So after five days, you've completed all of paper one content for chemistry so day one to five you're just doing two hours chem two hours maths now day six you're ready to do chem paper one test papers i've already mentioned this before so it will take you one to five days to finish module two four six content and when you're doing this you do two hour chem and two hour maths in the maths you do one hour content and one hour practice and i'll go on how to do this later on and the reason why it'll take you five days is because for module two there's 86 questions plus 3, 86 questions for 4, and 105 questions for module 6 plus 5. And what this means, plus 3 and plus 5, is after doing, let's say, module 2, what I would do is I would do exam-style questions on those. So I would do topic questions. What you normally do in school, so maybe you go into your school share drive and you go on topic questions that they already have, or you find them online or in textbooks that you have. So for module two, I found out that those three questions that I wanted to put in, in the notes that I had. And for six, I wanted to put five extra in. And one thing with OCR, module one is in all papers. So for paper one, two, three, module one is there. But for paper one, you need two, four, and six in particular. The reason why I wrote this here is because you need to do two hour chem test paper one. So this is when you first start doing test paper, like I already mentioned. So the reason why I wrote the seventh day here is because this is the same as the sixth day, but instead of doing the chem test paper, you're doing a maths paper. So what you're doing is from the sixth day onwards, you're always alternating from chem test paper to a math test paper, and you keep on switching it until you finish all the test papers available. So in paper two, you have module one, three, and five. In particular to paper two, you need to know module three and five. Module three is 105 questions plus four, 142 questions. So module five has a lot of exam style questions that I wanted to put in. And this is linked to the overview. So I've already done one to five. So six, seven, eight, we focus on module three, okay? From 9 to 11, we do the same thing from 6 to 8, so keep on alternating from maths and chem paper. But we go over the module 5 questions instead of the module 3. So what that means is after the 11th day, you would have finished all of chem content. So then from day 12 till the test day, what you need to do is you need to go over all the content by the questions you made. You'll need to color code, and I'll show you what that means later on, the gaps of knowledge, so any of the questions that you couldn't do, and you have a certain color key. So one thing you need to know is for the test papers, when you keep on alternating between the two, let's say for day six, you do 
the chemistry test paper here. So for this one, you need to make sure that you mark it afterwards and then you also look at what you got wrong and what you got right and maybe write down any topics that you keep on getting wrong. What we need to do is before we go through the test and in day six, we're talking about paper one. Paper one involves module 246. What we'll, so what we will do is we will go through the questions that we've made on module 246 before we do the test. And then we look at the module questions that we've also done, like the topic questions and any exam style questions and also the mark scheme. So this only is relevant to any test papers you've done in school or in the past or any homework exam style questions you've done. So that's that. So before every test you do, make sure you go through for all the relevant feedback that you have on that test paper on those modules that you're getting tested on. So now when you're going over all the content by the questions you made, you also want to do this. So for paper three, because you've already done all the notes for module two to six. And by the way, for module one, what module one is, is this practicals. So this is where you start refining on the knowledge that you have to know. So here you've got the practical sheet and I'll link down to a practical sheet that you guys can use. And you need to also go through the organic synthesis. So reaction pathways and all those different things you have to memorize all on two sheets of paper so it's linked also below so for aliphatic and aromatic and then so making sure you always look at the feedback for every test paper you've done so you can improve on to the next test paper now talking about the tests what you have is that when you're alternating between the two tests so maths and chem maths and chem if there's so this scenario only applies if for me when i did my a levels exams in 2020 there was only three years of test papers available so so 2017 2018 2019 or 2018 2019 and specimen so whatever's available let, let's say for me it was three or for you guys it might be more here because there's only three papers available then i would finish on the 10th if there's four papers available then i'll finish on the 12th and what I mean finish is I finish all the chem paper ones that are available. And because I started maths the day later and I was alternating, I would finish on the 11th if I finished on the 10th for chem. So the day after. So it will look a bit like this. So this only works. So remember, this only works if there's three years of papers available for each one. So here on the 12th, I'll do the first chem chemistry paper two. On the 14th, I'll do the second chemistry paper two. 16th, the third chemistry paper 2, 18th, the first chemistry paper 3 this time. And then on the 22nd, I'll finish all three chemistry paper 3s that are available. And that's that for chem. And I'll finish maths on the 23rd because I was alternating between. So maths was here, here, here. So 18, uh, 13th, 15th, 17th, 19th, and so on. So on the actual day, you don't have to like this is basically for people who don't really like put a certain routine like at nine o'clock i'll wake up at this time just wake up early just have your day set into a to-do list not at nine o'clock i'll do this and so forth because you can't control time something might come up so what i would do is just wake up um early eat your breakfast and do two hours cam two hours eat or whatever in between and then do two hours math so make sure you do the two hours of chem first then before doing the two hours maths and then the two hours paper it's like a to-do list so today i have to do this and this it doesn't matter what time i'll just do it making sure you also include physical activity in that day and physical activity helped me a lot so i did a more month program a home dumbbell work actually at home while revising and it helped me so much it helped me sleep better and also helped me motivate myself because I would usually do it at the end of the day. If I didn't do it, then I couldn't really revise properly and I didn't feel engaged or motivated. And in my next few videos, it's actually related to this. So make sure you guys subscribe and you'll see like a transformation video. But anyway, make sure you sleep enough too, seven to nine hours. So seven to nine is like the average. So one thing to note is you might not be consistent every day. You can't be like this every time. I was very close to doing it exactly the way I planned here. But there was like one or two days where I took a break. I was able to finish everything before my test date. Actually, not right before it, but... So I had the previous day completely free. And what I did on that three days is that I just relaxed and played games. So I didn't do an actual test paper the day before. I wouldn't do any new questions. I would just look at everything that I've done previously and just like 
look at the questions that I've drawn. And now I'll show you how to do the chem questions. Okay, I'll show you how to do the notion questions. And the way we're going to do this is imagine we're making flashcards, but everything will be digitally. And what we're going to do is we're not going to write down all the easy, easy peasy questions. We're going to only write the questions that are useful. There's no point in going through things that we already know. So what we do is split the screen in half like I already did. You have the specification on the left hand side and Notion on the right hand side. You can also do this with Word. But I'll show you with Notion and you can copy this on Word. It will be pretty simple to transfer. Okay, here we have my home page. Well, my chemistry home page. And I, this is everything customizable. So if you want to see how to customize it, you can just go on YouTube how to use Notion. But we'll go with module 2. And as you can see, I have a key here, which is pretty important. And I'll talk about it later on. So here, when we go on the first one, 2.1, point one, atomic structure and isotopes, if you toggle it down, you can see it says define, and I've got three questions. And this is because if you look on the left hand side, on 2.1.1, there was only three things that I really needed to jot down. Everything else was self-explanatory. So here, the definition of relative isotomic mass, which is this. And if you look on isotopic mass, I used to always forget this, so I wrote this down. I wrote the answer here. But as you can see for isotope here, this is something that I already knew the definition of, so I did not write the answer. But for things that I did not know the answer for, I wrote the answer here. And I'll show you quickly how to do toggles. So the only thing you need to learn from this video is how to do toggles. So all you do is do slash TOG and you get toggle list and whatever you write you can go underneath it by pressing enter and then tab and then writing something so you can toggle off and on to hide the answers so when you're revising you don't see the answers but if you need to look at the answers because you don't know then you toggle it and you can see the answer and if that does happen so when I said you have to go through the questions that you've made if that does happen then you should color code it here so for this one, I actually couldn't do this the first time. So I had to color code it red, which means only on the second try, but if I got it wrong again, then I would color code it blue. But anyway, let's carry on. So here you can see the mole explanation use of terms amount of substance. So I wrote that down amount of substance. Um, I also put mole down because mole was here and the definition I always forget. So I put it down. All the other ones I did not, that's why the toggle is a bit grey, so it means there's nothing there. Now this one's blue, so 2.2.1. Here it says orbitals, and it's a region around the nucleus that can hold up to two electrons with opposite spins. So here it is, as a region around the nucleus, so it has the definition here. And I got this wrong twice, so I could have put it blue. So whenever I go back over this, I only look at the coloured ones, because I know what, these are the ones that I get wrong and everything else I get right. So mole water of crystallization and define orbital everything else was pretty easy so i went through the specification and anything that came up like something that i had to learn so everything here really i made it into a question format but the thing is you need a third thing you need your textbook from your school or your booklets that they give you from what they teach you with so you would get that on your desk and while going through the specification you'd also go through the piece of material on the desk through each topic so so you're making sure that you don't miss anything and that's it really that's how you make questions and so you keep on doing it for each module so here i've got from all for module two and if i go back here module three four five and six now i will show you the exam style questions i did so for module five i did a lot of exam style questions apart from the hard facts from my textbook and the specification so here, these are all from the specification. And there's a lot of red ones here. <laughs> Define both files together. And then here you have the exam style questions. So the exam questions I always get wrong. So these are the questions that I got from the actual exam questions that I've done in practice or from module topic question. So here again, um, I split up in the subtopics and for each one, like what is the unit EA? So this is not in the specification, like it doesn't specifically say that, but this is something that I was got wrong, so I wrote that down. Uh, but here, how does rate equation show RDS? Click on that. 
and then these are no form you already understand that then assets like define buffers like all of these is exactly from the exam question that i did and i just copied their question and for the answers i just put the mask scheme down here so yeah that's all you do you just make questions questions like flashcards but you just do it here and make sure for the easy ones you do not write the answer it'll waste your time or else you won't be able to do it as quick as i did it all you have to do for maths is go to mathsgenie.co.uk you've got all the topics in a level a to z from as level to all the way from mechanics and pure i'll use maths genie for pure everything else for mechanics and statistics i had it in my head well for statistics i went through my school stuff and that was enough but for pure it was not enough and the reason why was maybe you can relate with me but let's say i struggled with one topic and then they went through i don't know the harder versions and i couldn't do it because i had to catch up and because i didn't know the stuff earlier on it, i struggled with the stuff later on and let's say i was doing really well in the year at the end of the year i was doing really bad especially with year two so what i would do is check on what you know and what you don't know and have a list of topics from hardest to easiest and with the hardest topics i would go with them first but making sure that they are from let's say as level first and then go to a level so check everything in as level you've got everything if you don't know the content go on the videos and on the videos they have different type of videos on different type of questions they can ask on those questions so that's why there's so many after doing those videos go on the exam style questions and the good thing with this is with mass genie they ask different type of questions they never repeat the questions where it's the same technique used so all of these are different types and then go in the solutions and the mask scheme should be enough to understand everything and you can do that from a to z and that's all you do for maths and i'll show you on and i'll show you some pictures of what i did in my book for content for maths and that's it hope you guys enjoyed that video and if you did make sure you like share and subscribe make sure you share it to people who would benefit from this and i think they will thank you a lot if you do share this i try to make as high quality as i can and hopefully i keep it at this where it's like a nice intro at the start it gives it a story and then you'll see how to do the actual thing later on but yeah and you can comment down below what you want me to do on like workouts productivity revision hopefully i'm getting into medicine so interviews you cut all of this or if you just want like a draw draw my life or anything specific to me just make sure you comment down and i'm very interested to see who actually watches to the end of these videos because on youtube you can't actually check that so in the comment just put emoji or put emoji of a pen right so just put emoji of a pen down below I think you can get that right so yeah put emoji of a pen down below and i just want to see in the comment section if you watched all the way to the end thank you very much i'll see you in the next video hopefully